Well, hi everyone, I'm Andrew Miller and this is Idea Dispenser. So today I wanted to talk to you about smart watches. And they've been in the news lately and I have a lot of thoughts, so I figured I would share some of them and get your feedback on what you think. Um, overall, I'm pretty skeptical about their chances and I uh, wanted to talk through some of that because I feel like a lot of people are just assuming that the wrist is the next great computing platform. So Samsung, Google, Motorola have all come out or are about to come out with smartwatch platforms and everyone assumes that Apple is also going to be coming out with one of these. So looking at what these systems already do they give you notifications about like new email or messages and they let you check basic stuff like the weather or um, any other sort of widget level interaction. The first question about this is what is the situation in which your phone isn't nearby and you want to check that basic stuff in a surreptitious manner. And I think what's going on here is that somebody has gotten this idea that people are in meetings where it would be uh, impolite to take out your phone and that that's the reason why you want something on your wrist so you can sort of casually glance at it. There's a couple problems with this. The first one is that here let me take out my phone. Oh I got my phone. So under a second um, it might take a little bit longer if I was sitting in an uncomfortable chair in a boardroom and I was in a meeting where it was improper for me to take out my phone. I don't know how often that really happens. I feel like maybe this is a scenario developed by middle managers at electronics companies because that's the life that they live. But I don't know how common that is and especially if you're going to spend two, three hundred dollars on a device, is that really why you're going to buy something like that? The second reason is that this is actually not the best place to show you notifications. So uh, let me show you a couple examples. So here we go. I have this watch. Um, this is a, a Swiss watch and it's sort of a normal size for a man's watch. It's a little bit large for a woman's watch, but styles and tastes might change. So it's about an inch in diameter and it uh, sits pretty close to the wrist. The first question is, what can you actually see on a device or a screen this small, and what can you do with it? The Motorola Google one here is actually the best so far. You basically just swipe past, and you swipe up here. My question is, if you get to the point where you're swiping on this super tiny screen, why not spend another second or two and get this screen and this iPhone is actually considered small by today's smartphone standards and you can see there's just a lot more room to do stuff with and it's already nearby for most people. The Galaxy Gear actually does quite a bit more. It's more like a, a, a device on its own and it has some additional problems. It's closer in size to this. This is a, a Velox watch and it's about an inch and a half in diameter and you can see it's quite thick. Um, I have a slightly below average size wrist for a man, but certainly um, would be, you know, not abnormal. And it takes up almost the entire wrist. And if I sort of step back, I mean, it's pretty noticeable. There's really a question about whether people are going to be wanting to wear something this large on their wrist all day long, just on the off chance that they might get a notification or they might need to check the weather or something. The other thing that bothers me about this notification idea is I actually know people who wear the Pebble smartwatch which is um, an iPhone or Android connectable e-ink display. I don't have the Pebble, but I do have this watch, and this is um, the Phosphor, and it's got an e-ink display. The thing that I actually notice that doesn't become apparent until you wear this for a day, every 15 minutes, this screen actually wipes itself. I actually found myself sort of like glancing over, like, what, what's going on? And I noticed this when I was in meetings with people who do wear the Pebble watch, that I actually noticed that they had a notification before they did. Because if you think about it, you're sitting, you're at a meeting, you're talking to somebody over here, and then your watch sort of like either vibrates, which we can all hear, or it flashes in some way, which we can all see. It's actually the other people in the meeting who get the notification before you do, and the benefits of any sort of subtlety are gone. Ah, you may say, but what if I'm wearing long sleeves? Well, if you're wearing long sleeves, then it takes you just as long to like roll up the sleeve and take a look as it would to look at the phone, and it's even less subtle. 
The uh, final thing that smartwatches might be useful for is sensing. This is the Fitbit Zip. Um, it runs on a watch battery, so I figured it was uh, good to bring up here. And it can sit uh, either um, on the bra strap or on the waist, and uh, it just happily counts your steps, and then when you shake it, it'll show you how many steps you've got and whether you've met your goal, sort of some basic information. Quite large by sensor standards, but again, not too bad for the wrist. I would just say that um, I don't always want to show something off that's lime green, and you don't have to when you are uh, building something for other parts of the body um, where it can be hidden. And also, the wrist isn't necessarily the best place to get, uh, to get sensing information, especially if you're wearing it like a watch. Now, some people do wear their watches with the face up like this, other people wear them with the face up like this. Now for men, this is actually a conundrum because a bunch of the stuff that you might want to get from a sensor, it requires constant direct contact with the skin. And the wrist isn't a bad place, but do you really want to design something that has to be worn with the face down here, when you could design something that could be uh, more easily concealable and, uh, and therefore worn without advertising that you're wearing a sensing device? Uh, the last point, and this may be apparent to you already, is uh, just the variety of wristwear options. I happen to have a watch addiction, so I have the watches you've already seen. I also have this one. I have one that looks like a little cassette. I have this one that I can never tell which way it's supposed to be. I have this one, this one. I got this one. I have this one that's like a little alarm clock. So the point is not really that I have uh, an addiction to watches that I need to deal with, because I know that's true. The point is that these are just a very small set of the variety of wristwear options, and watches and and jewelry on the body send social signals, and people don't always want to send the same signals all the time. And, more importantly, people don't want to send the same signals as each other. Cell phones have solved this. My iPhone didn't come with this red case, I bought it. And so people want to bling out, they want to personalize their smartphones. Well gosh, they're going to want to do that even more to a smartwatch. And I'm not really sure, once you're constrained by a certain size, whether adding bulkiness for different swappable covers or straps is really going to cut it for a smartwatch. So, places that smartwatches are good. They're great if you are sitting in meetings all the time with your wrist out, ready to receive alerts. Um, they might be great uh, for a sensing platform if you are living with a chronic condition and you want something that's easily swappable or, um, or adjustable that can give you vital signs. And they might be good if you just want to experiment and see uh, what the possibilities are for this space. But it's really unclear why the smartwatch might actually be the next platform. I think we've already got the next platform, and it's the smartphone. And wearables are going to be way more interesting than what's on your wrist. So let me know in the comments. Uh, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, tell me uh, why you agree, and share what watch you have. I'm super interested to find out. Like this video if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There'll be way more videos coming. Thanks a lot!